Yo, what's going on guys, it's Gminers here. Some of you have asked that I go over the best generic or general mods to use for endgame content, so that is exactly what we will be doing in today's video. As always, if you have a video you want me to make or something you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. I always try to make them. Even though in-game there are specific mods known as general mods, we will more so be covering mods that go on each individual piece of armor. The general mods are just stat bonuses, so these are pretty self-explanatory. So starting off on the helmet, the main mods you are going to have are going to be ammo finders and targeting mods. Targeting in PvE is useless, so there's no reason to use these. Ammo finders, in my opinion, can be great. The only issue is that the ammo drops received from these mods are not full-sized ammo drops. So in a lot of cases, if you want these special or heavy drops to be useful, ammo finder mods need to be doubled up or paired with a scavenger mod. On top of this, in endgame content, someone on your team should almost always be running special and or heavy finisher when in boss encounters. In my experience, if someone is doing this, there isn't a huge need for ammo finders. Also, keep in mind that in endgame content like day one raids, there are normal special drops because famine isn't on. So unless you are using a special weapon for DPS, the only ammo that you may struggle to find is going to be heavy. The mods hands-on, ashes to assets, and dynamo are all pretty useless perks in endgame content in my opinion. I'm sure you have seen these used heavily in some of your favorite OP, super, and grenade builds, but these builds just won't work in endgame content and I'd rather save the mod slots. With changes to helmets and the orb generation mods coming next season, I expect these will be the mods I run on my helmet. Power of preservation could also work extremely well on helmets for generating orbs. I would say, in general, save your helmet mod slots for combat style mods that are more expensive and save slots somewhere else. If you have the slots, use ammo finders, unless you need orb generation in your builds for Witch Queen. Moving on to the arms, the main mods you're going to have here are loader and dexterity mods. Dexterity for the most part is absolutely useless. The only exception I would make is for shotguns as you can still use these this season to hot swap slug shotguns. Next season, using two of these mods will cost 10 energy so you won't have any room on your arms for champion mods. I also find the loader mods extremely useless there might be some cases for DPS when increasing your reload speed makes a world of a difference, but in all of my time playing the game, I can't think of any. Running through the other mods available, Fastball, Impact Induction, Momentum Transfer, Bolstering Detonation, Focusing Strike, and Melee Kickstart are all useless. Save your mod slot. I do think that Grenade Kickstart is a great mod, however for the effects to be noticeable, you need two of these. This uses both slots once again, meaning no champion mods. It also uses up 8 of your total 10 energy. On your arms, very much like your helmet, I would suggest running more expensive combat style mods and seasonal champion mods. Even if you have artifice armor and you put the champ mods in the extra slot, I still think that using some of the other mod options will just end up being a waste of energy. Before I continue with the rest of the mods, if you found this video useful, don't forget to drop a like and sub down below. Subbing is completely free, it helps me out a ton and you can always change your mind later. Arguably, the most useful mods fall on your chest piece. The majority of mods you have here are going to be reserve mods and unflinching mods. The only unflinching mod I think is useful is sniper rifle and with that possibly linear fusion rifle unflinching. In most cases, in endgame content, if you are taking enough damage to be continuously flinched, you are probably already dead. The only major exception is when sniping out of Well of Radiance where you are constantly being healed. Reserve mods, on the other hand, can make a world of difference depending on the weapon type you are using. The only time I use these mods, however, is when I am not in need of any of the resist mods. I'll come back to the reserve mods in a moment, but now I want to go over each of these resist mods as they are hands down the most useful mod I'm going to talk about in this video. Each and every resistance mod available will reduce your incoming damage by 25%. Stacking two of these mods has decreasing effects, but will still provide a total of 40% damage reduction which is absolutely insane for endgame PvE. For reference, Protective Light is a 50% damage resistance. So by running two of these mods, you essentially have Protective Light at all times. This is why in my stats video, I said that running Resilience was almost entirely useless. The only difference here is that these mods only work for one particular type of damage. Oftentimes, in an encounter, there are multiple different damage sources, so these mods will not always work flawlessly. Every single one of these mods are extremely self-explanatory. In general, I use Concussive Dampener against most bosses unless they are not dealing splash damage. Melee Resist is great against Majors and Ultras that deal melee damage like Captains or Knights. 
Sniper resistance can be good, but the game doesn't recognize sniper damage. This mod just works against targets that are far away. So if there are sniper enemies that are close to you, an elemental resistance mod is going to be your best bet. With changes coming to Witch Queen, you will also be able to easily swap your armor affinity for extremely cheap. So I recommend not using combat style mods that are affinity based on your chest piece so that you can quickly change your armor affinity to play around these different elemental resistance mods if need be. With all this laid out, I wanted to go back and mention one more thing about the reserve mods. These mods can easily be applied to one chest piece, used to rally, and then you can swap to a chest with resistance mods on. After doing this, you will keep all the reserve ammo. You just won't be able to replenish the extra ammo from reserves once it has been used. If you are trying to go for a top clear during contest mode, this will definitely slow your team down. Even if you swap during death screens, this will extend the time it takes to reload the encounter. I figured I'd mention it anyways, because most teams probably aren't going for a top clear, and this could help people get the DPS they need on day one. After the chest, we have leg armor. The two main mod sets here are scavenger and holster mods, both of which can be extremely useful. Scavenger mods, as I mentioned, can be great when paired with finer mods and can honestly be great on their own. If someone on your team is actively doing ammo finishers, having scavenger on is great because you will have a ton of bricks laying around and get extra ammo from every one of them. Holster, on the other hand, is like a really slow form of auto-loading holster, but it works for any gun. Personally, I use machine gun holster when running the Xenophage. The only downside to Xeno is the slow reload time, so using holster allows me to use the weapon against things like majors and champions, and then stow it to reload over time. I am a huge fan of decreasing the downtime spent doing things like reloading and swapping weapons in Destiny, so holster, in my opinion, is great if used on the right weapons. The other mods for leg armor all revolve around picking up orbs of power, most of these I find useless as they focus on replenishing abilities on pickup. However, two of these mods are actually great for survivability. Better Already is my personal favorite as the mod begins health regeneration on orb pickups. Recuperation on the other hand provides you with an instant amount of health. I like Better Already because I typically find that you can get more health out of these pickups than the technically limited amount provided by recuperation. Personally, I recommend always running either Solar or Void Leg Armor, depending on which mod between these two you prefer. Other than that, on my Leg Armor, I run holsters for ad clear encounters, this way I can avoid reloading certain weapons, and if I'm in a boss encounter, scavenger mods are typically what I will use. Last but not least is the class item. There are a few useful mods here, so I'm going to cover what I think is useful in order. Bomber is amazing for extra grenade energy. Bulwark and Healthy Finisher can be great if you're running a build that generates elemental wells off of finishers. My only complaint here is with doing this, you need to waste super energy for these mods. And lastly, Special Finisher, as I've mentioned many times already, is amazing. A lot of the other finisher mods here are decent, but not great in my opinion, and they all obviously consume super energy, which I don't always think is worth it. In general, I save my class item for seasonal artifact mods, combat style mods, stat bonuses, and Special Finisher if need be. That is pretty much all of the mods I would say are useful. If you take anything away from this video, it should be that the resistance mods and special finisher are two of the best mods in the game for end game content. And you should bring both of these into the raid during contest mode. Speaking of contest mode, I will be streaming my run over at twitch.tv slash gminers. Link is in the description below. Anyways, guys, that is all for today's video. Hope this helps. Peace.